All right, guys, we're going to learn how to hit the backhand cross drop slice. Here's two clips of Lee ZGI playing perfect backhand cross drops. Let's take a look. This first one's an outright winner. And this next one turns out to be a 95% kill shot. So two very successful outcomes. Great angle from Lee. Stunning angle, in fact. Great doesn't do it justice. I agree. Lee probably has one of the best backhands in the game at this time. It's really important that when you're just learning how to hit this shot that you aim higher over the net and deeper into the opposite court. Don't try to make it perfect in the early stages. As you get closer to mastering the shot, you can start hitting it tighter to the net. In a match, the target and trajectory of the shot depend on the situation. If you're under pressure, hit the shuttle deeper into the opponent's court because this will give you more time to recover. And if you're in control, you can, if you choose to, hit the shuttle tighter to the net. The strategical application of this shot is twofold. One, it gives you exceptional control because of the slice, and two, it gives you excellent deception if you occasionally combine it with a straight clear. Now let's compare the cross drop with the straight drop. The racket at contact in a straight drop is flush or square and the follow through is straight. Whereas the contact in a cross drop, in this case with high contact point, is angled and the follow through is cross court. Turning your torso and body to face the shuttle is part of the follow through and keeps you connected with the rally. The same goes with the cross drop with a low contact point. The racket is even more angled and the follow through is even more cross court. Again, turn your body and torso to face the shuttle. In this frame, you can see that my racket arm is fully outstretched my wrist is cocked and my fingers are loose around the handle because that's how you're going to achieve the final punch. The racket head is angled for slice and direction. A good way to think of producing angle is to lead with the outside edge of the racket head. When looking at the shuttle from underneath, notice that it spins clockwise. It does this because of the way the feathers on the shuttle overlap one another. Using a tennis ball, here's what the spin would look like when looking at it from the side. All right, now I'll demonstrate the flight dynamics of a shuttle for right-handers and for left-handers. So a right-hander's forehand is the same as a left-hander's backhand. Both players' rackets move across the shuttle in the same direction as the natural spin of the shuttle, so clockwise or from left to right. Right now, you're looking at this video from the front, so imagine you are looking at it from behind. And here you can see a right-hander's backhand is the same as a left-hander's forehand. In this case, both players' rackets move across the shuttle in the opposite direction as the natural spin of the shuttle, so counterclockwise or from right to left. Let's see this comparison on court. Here's Lee's right-handed backhand cross drop. And here's Kento Momoda's left-handed forehand cross drop. Yeah, to this tournament, oh. and now he's won four straight. But just listen to the commentary here. That's delightful. Landing in front of the front service line, showing just what an acute angle it was. So Jillian called it right. That's exactly what we're looking for out of this shot, an acute angle. So when you swing against the spin, you increase the drag and decelerate the shuttle. And when you go with the spin, you decrease the drag and accelerate the shuttle. In this diagram, you can see that the shuttle will maintain a counter spin up to about two feet from the net. Once it breaches the net by about a foot, it stops spinning. And then it resumes its natural spin until it hits the ground. So in the first stage, the shuttle flies slower, which maintains its height longer, and then it progressively picks up speed, which is why left-handers like Linden and Kento Momoda use their forehand cross drop often in order to drop the shuttle close to the net and work the opponent. Let's watch the backhand cross again and pick out the strategical advantages of this shot. 
Xiu Qi plays a forehand straight clear into Li's backhand corner. Xi hedges his bets and anticipates a straight return and hangs out on that side rather than going back to the center. He thinks Li will play a straight clear rather than a drop, which is why he also hangs back rather than coming forward to cut off a drop. This leaves the cross court corner wide open with little risk for Li. It's actually the best option. You can see Xi guessed wrong by his upright posture. His center of gravity is further back so his legs move forward but his upper body is going back, the hallmark of an opponent who's been tricked. The shot causes big physical damage on Xi as you can appreciate from his huge stretch and bent back. Now let's take a look at the technical points of this shot. Li starts with a 90 degree angle in the wrist and his elbow which is also tucked into the hip. His wrist is cocked. He then preloads the racket and arm as I've mentioned in my backhand clear video. He then drops the racket low and points the elbow towards the shuttle, loads the thumb and then supinates his wrist and strikes the shuttle at the optimal contact point for the shot. It's a blur but his racket is angled cross court to create slice and direction. This shot is more of a punch follow through because the shuttle is so far behind him. His opposite arm is way behind his back so that he can turn to face what ends up being a winning shot. Here's another example of Li Zijia's superb ability to pull off this shot. Take a look. Great angle from Li. Stunning angle, in fact. I think great doesn't do it justice. Once again, I agree with the commentator's praise for Li's shot. Okay, so in this frame of the prep phase, you can see the 90 degree angle in the elbow, which is also tucked into the hip and the cocked wrist. During the subtle preload phase, his handle moves to his opposite shoulder. Entering the load phase, Li points his elbow towards the shuttle whilst maintaining the cock wrist, which is when most people lose this structure. He leads with the outside edge of the racket, which, if Chen could see, would tell him Li was going cross court. And finally, the powerful forearm supination and perfect contact. Notice again how Li tucks his non-racket arm behind his back to increase torso rotation as he turns to face the shot in one flowing motion which is integrated into the stroke. Notice the steep angle in the shuttle's trajectory which is a result of the counterspin and how Chen has to dig extremely low to get his racket underneath. Notice that the angle of the racket is straight up and slightly cross cord. His legs are at maximal stretch. He's doubled over and his arm can't get any longer, forcing him to play the only shot available to him, the cross court net, which Lee easily reads. I just want to make a point about adjusting center of gravity since this is one of the best examples while a player is in full forward movement towards the net. Lee's non-racket foot steps in front of his racket foot at the same time as his non-racket arm shoots out to the left. This combination allows his center of gravity and upper body to fall to the left and in the direction of the shot, unlike what you saw Shi Yu Chi do at the beginning of this video. Because of the quick shift in his center of gravity, it allows him to anticipate the cross net catch the shuttle high and reverse tumble the shuttle. Now I'll go over the footwork which you can see in more detail in my footwork video in my video library. When moving to the shuttle, use shuffle cross footwork. It's actually quite simple. Just take a look for now. All right, so here it comes. So there's the shuffle action. And then there's the cross with the racket foot. So shuffle sideways towards the corner and then cross over with your racket foot. Transition is the part of the footwork between moving to the shuttle and recovering back to the center. This footwork is drag and pivot. So there's the non-racket foot. Drag this foot towards the corner as you hit the backhand and then pivot on it so you turn around smoothly and quickly. Dragging it in allows a tighter spin of your body so you can turn and face the shuttle more quickly. Recovery to the center after playing the shot is a simple shuffle movement, the same as you would do to move towards the shot. So just take a look. So I've come out of transition and just simply shuffled back to the middle. Again, I've pivoted on my non-racket foot and just shuffled back to the middle. Lee walks back to the center after playing the high cross lift, which is appropriate. He sets his ready position as Chen plants his racket foot. Then he times his split step and assumes a low posture as Chen plays a straight clear. He shuffles to the corner and then crosses his racket foot, drags the non-racket foot and pivots on it and then shuffles back to the center. Let's watch again. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful 
So the key points to executing this shot are angle the racket for slice and direction, use outside slice, follow through cross court by turning to face the shuttle, and aim high and deep to reduce errors. Moving to the shuttle, use shuffle cross, transition using drag and pivot, and to recover, shuffle back to the middle. So that's it. If you like this video and you want to learn more, please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to check out my website at www.titanathletics.co.uk where I offer a range of coaching services including consultation, video analysis, and virtual coaching. Thanks for watching.